Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Cryptic here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over Office 365 contacts and share mailboxes. Let's get started, okay? Let me share my screen with you and we'll get started right away. So we're going to go into screen three. So today I want to go over share mailboxes contacts and um, how do we use it and why do we use it? Okay, so for contacts, it's uh, Office 365 contacts are created by the administrators and are available on their people to, to all users in Office 365. The contacts are visible to all users in Microsoft Outlook, Outlook on the web, and mobile devices. These contacts could only be created and updated by Office 365 administrators. You can't, you can't add cust custom fields for birthdays, anniversaries, etc. So when we think when we when we think about contacts, right? Think about think about contacts. You, you, you're like, what is it, Kevin? Think about contacts on your phone. But in this scenario, we use contacts for um, uh, sending emails to certain vendors, people that work in IT, people that are consultants. It, and they could you could actually add contacts to distribution groups. You, there's a bunch of things you could do with contacts. So I'm gonna actually show you how that works. But before I do that, let me go to the next slide, okay? So we have share mailboxes. So share mailboxes is a type of user mailbox that doesn't have its own its own username and password. As a result, users can't log into it to them directly to access the share mailbox. Users must be first granted send as or full access permissions to the mailbox. Once that's done, the user sign into their own mailbox and then access the share mailbox by adding into the Outlook profile. In exchange to 20, uh, 2003 and earlier, share mailboxes were, were, were used as regular mailboxes to which an administrator could grant delegate access. Beginning in exchange 2007, share mailbox became their own recipient type. So user mailbox and share mailbox. I know it's like the spacing is a little weird, but yeah. So basically you have, you, basically they changed it up. So it used to be all together. Now it's user mailbox and share mailbox it separated them. And uh, the thing is, I get asked all the time about share mailboxes. Like, do you need a license for it? Is your answer right here. Your share mailbox can be stored up to 50 GB of data without you assigning a license to it. After that, you need to give it a license. Otherwise, you, you're going to have a bunch of problems. So you need to have a license after you you uh, um, spend all the, all the space on the share mailbox, if that makes sense. Okay? So I'm going to minimize that. Now I'm going to actually show you how contacts work. And we have two different types of contacts. We actually have a mail user contact. So this is, you could add someone here and give them a unique ID and everything. And, and they could email kevtechitsupport.com. I don't really use this in my job environment. Some companies will use it, some will not, depends on the company. I use the one on the, on the top. So there's two different ones, right? Mail contact. So I want to show you how it works. So I'm gonna click mail contact. And when you do mail contact, right, you, you actually have the ability to put the person's first name, their last name, their display name, and their external email address. So I could put here Kevin Polinario, right? Uh, this is a unique identifier alias, right? And I'm going to put my email address. So you guys know my email address, right? So kevpolinario63 at gmail.com. I'm going to hit save, right? And now it's in here. When you double click on him, Right, you you could hide it from the gal. You could put you could put contact information where that person's from. You have their department, their title, their company, and you have mail tips. So, like Kevin, what's the point of this? So, if you have like a like a a contact that works with the IT department, you could actually add them to a distribution group. Remember, I got over distribution groups in my other videos, right? You could actually add a contact to it. So if I go here, right. And I go into service desk right over here and I do membership and I do the plus sign and I could put Kevin upon Nerdle 63 at gmail.com. So now if I email, if I email service desk email, it should go to Kevin as well. So I'm going to go here just for the, just for the fun of it. Right. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go and do this. And I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do test email. I'm gonna do test. And I'm gonna send it, and let's see what happens when I do that. And I'm gonna open up another tab. I just want to show you. So I'm gonna give you like I want to give you the real realistic, you know, realistic. Um, how you call it? Like realistic. Uh, just how it's done in real life in our environment, right? So then you get an email from because because Kevin, the Gmail account is on service desk. It's a contact, right? 
because you had that contact, he should have got an email. And did he get an email? Yes, he did. So it was right here. See? Service desk, because he's part of service desk, he got the email. So you're like, ah, oh, it still doesn't make any sense. So when you think of a contact as your phone contact, right? So you have a contact that allows you to add it in a group. Then who, if he's part of that group or she's part of that group, that person is able to receive emails. Typically, it's done with a vendor. So we have like a vendor, like a third party that's an IT consultant or someone that is not part of the organization. Sometimes we add into a distribution group. We may have a group here, right, that is specific to that vendor. So you have a you have a vendor that you're working with. You may add them to a group. You may not. So every company is different. Every company is set up differently. In my past experience, obviously, everyone's different. Like every company is different. In my past experience, I have worked with a CEO, a CFO, and then usually we put we put their Yahoo account over here, their Gmail account over here, and then we add them to certain groups here. And they may be semi-retired, but they're not. They're still working in the company. So you you add them to the you create a contact for them, and then you add them to a group. That's just my past experience. I'm going based on my experience. Obviously, everyone is different, but that's my past experience. So share mailboxes, right? We have share mailboxes right over here. I'm going to call it, let's just call it help desk for today. Um, yeah, hold up, call it help desk. We got more options right over here. And let's see if that's me. I have to, I have to add people to it. Just give it a second. Help this is already being used. Okay, so we're gonna do let's do tech support. Let's see if it lets me do that. Help this is already being used by another name. So I had to change the whole name on the top and on the bottom. That's totally fine. Let's see if it lets me do that. Just give it a second. So I want to create a share mailbox just to show you how it works, right? So when you think when you have a share mailbox, think of a mailbox that's being shared by everyone. That's just it's so simple. That's as simple as as easy as it gets. It's a share mailbox you could share with everyone. What are the advantage? But the advantages of doing it is basically you you could add a bunch of people to it. So I'm gonna add myself to it. Okay, upon Nario, right? And I'm gonna do send as access as well. So basically, that you allow you you have the ability to send on behalf of this mailbox. You have mailbox usage. I'm going to get an error message because it's never been used before, which is totally fine. You have contacts, organization, email address. Remember, I got over this. Remember, I got over mailbox features that you have. You have the ability to change the policies on it. Mail flow, mail restrictions. Anyone, you got a distribution group in here if you like. So I'm going to hit save. All right. Just give it a second. Give it two seconds. And uh, let's just give it a little bit of time. So when you think about share mailboxes, you think of a mailbox you could share with other people. What are what are some of the issues I had in the past with share mailboxes? I'm actually going to show you right now. Let me open up my Outlook for a second. Let's see if it lets me load. It may it may it may it may get a little laggy because I just created another mailbox and I added myself to the mailbox. So it might it should show up here on the bottom left hand side. Just give it give it a little bit of time to replicate. It does take time to replicate sometimes when you when you're actually adding someone to a share mailbox. And if and if that doesn't work, right, you can actually manually add it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things because I, I mean I like to I like to show people certain things you could do on this. So we have more settings right over here. You have settings right over here. Do add, let's do text support. Let's see if it shows up. Give it a second. Spinning and spinning and spinning. See the tech support mailbox is there now. I'm gonna hit OK. Let's give it a second. So you see here it says download share folders. I have had issues in the past that if you check mark this to download share folders, it gives you a bunch of problems. So you may want to be careful with that. So now I have the share mailbox right over here, actually. And it's probably gonna, gonna be a little laggy because it's 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 a share mailbox. So let's give it a, give it a second. There we go. All right, awesome. Awesome. All right, that worked. Good. So if I email, let's just email tech support. Do a test email. Let's just send an email. And you get the email. There we go. It's a share mailbox. So yeah, a bunch of people added to the share mailbox. You, you just saw how I added myself. You add a bunch of people to it. What are the advantages of it? 
everyone gets the same email at the same time because they're all part of the same shared mailbox. What are the disadvantages of it? Sometimes you'll have a sync issue where I get the email, but then someone else doesn't get the email. Even though you're part of the same shared mailbox, you may not get the same email at the same time. Sometimes you have issues like that where you have to actually recreate the mailbox. Oh, you may have to come in here, come in here, come in here, like what I did, right? You may have to come in here and you may have to remove it and re-add it again. And that might fix the problem. There's a lot of issues with shared mailboxes, just letting you know, by the way. I'm, not, I'm just going to be honest with you. And there, there's also categories. So some companies, like I worked in a, I worked in a hedge fund that they did, they did publishing, right? So because they did publishing, they would put categories on their on the on the emails to let people know that they completed the task. So if they if they had a, a category for 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 green, right, and it would say, "Oh, completed." They had a category. Oh, this is for for papers. Oh, this is for newspapers. This is for publishing. This is for this or that. So sometimes you'll have issues with categories. So this is where you where your where your um where your thinking cap has to come on, and you have to actually run like commands to actually try to fix your mailboxes there are certain commands you can run i'm not going to go over that today but those are the common issues you you'll have in it land and if you go here right if i go here and if i type it in it pops up automatically it shouldn't it shouldn't give me a bunch of issues and i'm going to do this i'm going to do tests so i'm sending myself an email right now and if i do that i am getting an email from the tech support share mailbox so it does work it's uh, pretty easy to understand. I hope it's easy to understand. So that is share mailboxes in a nutshell. You basically, it's a, the, the advantages of it is you have a mailbox that you could share with a bunch of people and add them to it. And then everyone gets the same email. Some companies may have a share mailbox for help desk. So if you go and let me stop sharing for a second, that's pretty much it for today. But some companies have a share mailbox. And if you go to that company, they're going to have a mailbox that you share with each other. And they, they all have the same mailbox, which is help desk or IT support. And that email goes to everyone in that share mailbox. In my previous jobs, I have had that. In my previous jobs, I did not have that. I had that in another company. I had everyone added to a distribution group. And then the email goes to everyone through the distribution group to their regular inbox. Some companies may have this. Some companies may have share mailboxes. And then you get, you get the email that way. So it really depends where you work. It depends on the company. I have to go over this because you're going to see this in your job. And this is something that you'll see in the real life environment where People are disconnecting, reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting from shared mailboxes, and it doesn't work. You could also add a, a, an additional mailbox on your Outlook web app phone. I'm not going to go over that today, but you could actually do that. So you could add an additional mailbox on your phone if you have Outlook um, app on the phone. Some, some, it may be some restrictions on it. Depends on the company you're working for, but you could actually do that, okay? Um, hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully if you're brand new to IT, you understand what I talked about today. And hopefully this gives you a better understanding of contacts and share mailboxes. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good day. As always, appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. And I hope this helps you out and share this with someone that's brand new to IT that has never even heard of share mailboxes. Share mailboxes. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful Sunday. Take care. Peace.